Hi, my name is Sean Spencer. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Stanford University in the lab of Justin Sonnenberg. Today, I'll share my work with you on fermented foods, eavesdropping on the conversation between bacteria, our food, and our immune system. You are what you eat, the popular adage says. This is absolutely correct. Our entire bodies are composed solely of the food we choose to consume from our DNA to our skin. It all comes from our plate. Because of this, our bodies have evolved complex and elegant systems to sense food intake and respond dynamically to what we eat. This is particularly true in the intestine where its function is tuned to the frequency of our food. As a gastroenterologist and researcher at Stanford, I study how the foods we eat can benefit our immune system and promote a healthy gut microbiota to reduce inflammation and prevent disease. My research focus is to better understand mechanisms, how the food can reduce inflammation that in turn prevents chronic inflammatory disease, such as diabetes and heart disease. Plants are covered in bacteria and fungi. These organisms benefit the plant while growing, and after we harvest the plants, help to make them even more healthy, delicious, and sometimes alcoholic through fermentation. Fermented foods are foods made through desired microbial growth and enzymatic conversion of food components. To ferment something, you can simply put food, such as grapes or cabbage, into a clean jar, and it will become wine or sauerkraut. Think about that. It's almost magical. Fermented foods have deep historical and cultural roots. They have been consumed in nearly all cultures over the last five to 10,000 years. Fermentation prevents spoilage and preserves food while improving its nutritional quality. You may have heard about the health benefits of fermented foods. However, we still don't fully understand how they can improve our health. Our lab set up a clinical trial to better understand the health impact of fermented foods. We had participants increase their fermented food intake, such as yogurt, kombucha, sauerkraut, and sauerkraut brine, along with other fermented vegetables. As a result, we observed a broad decrease in inflammation with intake of fermented foods. Specifically, we found that consumption of sauerkraut brine and yogurt were associated with the strongest anti-inflammatory signatures. We are now focused on ways that fermented foods, such as yogurt and sauerkraut, can reduce chronic inflammation. We think this happens by influencing the intestinal immune system. The intestine is the key site of nutrient absorption has the surface area of a tennis court while only being a single cell thick and is home to the largest reservoir of immune cells in the body that intimately interact with our nutritional intake. It's pretty amazing. When we eat fermented food, we ingest the plants that were fermented as well as the bacteria and fungi that did the fermenting. And most importantly, a plethora of microbial metabolites that our body can recognize. My focus is to understand which components of fermented foods and how they affect our immune system. We have now identified several key metabolites from bacteria that the immune system directly responds to in order to decrease inflammation. Through both human clinical trials and animal models, we will better understand the anti-inflammatory properties of fermented foods, enabling us to leverage their therapeutic potential in everyday clinical practice and on our plates.